In subcellular fractionation, cells are disrupted and their components are isolated into relatively homogeneous fractions. The first step in subcellular fractionation is breaking the plasma membrane. A high-speed blender can break the plasma membrane and endoplasmic reticulum into small fragments, while leaving nuclei, mitochondria, and other organelles intact. The suspension of broken cells is called a homogenate, or a lysate, and is now separated into like components by a series of centrifugations. An ultracentrifuge can rotate samples at very high speeds, over 100,000 RPM, to produce forces up to 500,000 times greater than gravity. However, the first spin is usually set at a low rotation speed, producing a centrifugal force of about 800 times the force of gravity for 10 minutes. During this spin, the largest and densest materials sediment first, forming a pellet at the bottom of the tube. This pellet will contain unbroken cells and nuclei. Thus, an enriched fraction of nuclei can be recovered from the pellet, while the other cell components are suspended in the remaining solution, called the supernatant. The supernatant is now centrifuged at a higher speed, producing a force of 15,000 times the force of gravity for 10 minutes to sediment mitochondria, lysosomes, and peroxisomes. The supernatant contains smaller and less dense components. Recentrifugation of the supernatant at an even higher speed and duration sediments fragments of the plasma membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum. A fourth centrifugation at a still higher speed sediments ribosomes, leaving only the soluble portion of the cytoplasm, the cytosol, in the supernatant. This series of spins at higher and higher speeds and durations is called differential centrifugation. In differential centrifugation, subcellular components are separated by their size and density, with larger and denser components sedimenting faster than smaller and less dense components. The fractions obtained from differential centrifugation correspond to enriched, but still not pure, organelle preparations. For instance, some smaller particles will be found in all pellets, considering some of these particles are already present at the bottom of the tube in the original homogenate. A greater degree of purification can be achieved by resuspending the pellets in solution and then performing density gradient centrifugation in which the sample is made to sediment through a gradient of a dense substance, such as sucrose. At the top of the gradient, the sucrose concentration is lower than at the bottom of the gradient. There are two main types of density gradient centrifugation, velocity centrifugation and equilibrium centrifugation. In velocity centrifugation, the sample is added carefully to the top of the tube in a narrow zone. The sucrose gradient below the sample serves to prevent the convective mixing of the solutions and keeps the particles in tight zones during centrifugation. Particles of different sizes sediment through the gradient at different rates, moving as discrete bands. In this technique, the density of sucrose at the bottom of the tube is less than the density of the organelles, so the centrifugation is stopped before the particles can form a pellet at the bottom of the tube. Following centrifugation, the different zones in the tube can be isolated in separate collection tubes. A hole formed in the bottom of the tube allows the collection of the different fractions. The fast sedimenting particles emerge first. The slow sedimenting particles emerge later. The other type of density gradient centrifugation is equilibrium centrifugation. In this technique, the concentrations of solutes in the gradient are very high such that the density of the gradient at the highest point is higher than the density of the particles of interest. Organelles with higher densities are defined as having greater mass-to-volume ratios. During centrifugation, the particles move to the location at which their own density matches the density of the surrounding solution, and this is where they remain. Although larger particles may travel faster to their equilibrium locations, the spin is kept going long enough for all the particles to reach equilibrium. Thus, the final state of the tube depends only on the buoyant density of the particles. Equilibrium centrifugations are useful in separating different types of membranes from one another and are sufficiently sensitive to separate macromolecules that are labeled with different isotopes. 
A classic example is the analysis of DNA replication by separating DNA molecules containing heavy and light isotopes of nitrogen using equilibrium centrifugation in cesium chloride gradients. The light and heavy DNA come to equilibrium at different locations along the tube. A hybrid DNA with one light and one heavy strand bands in the middle.